Hello everyone and welcome to The Bubbling Adventure, a podcast all about kids and how educating them positively can impact their entire life as well as society. Each week we're having conversations with guests on different themes and our aim is to have open discussions, share different points of view and learn in a non-judgmental way. Today we're welcoming Maria Campello, who is a clinical psychologist based in Portugal. After having experienced fertility issues herself, she decided to specialize in helping couples who are in this exact situation. I thought it was a very interesting episode, as unfortunately more and more people find themselves in this situation. But without further ado, let's begin. Papa, en faisant cette chanson. Maman, papa, maman, papa. Hi Maria, how are you today? Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining. So you're in Portugal now, right? Yes, I'm in Portugal at the moment, in Lisbon, Morocco. Wow, well, it must be nice and sunny, I imagine. It is, it is. Perfect. So can I please ask you to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. My name is Maria. I'm 30 years old, recently a mom. <laughs> I'm a psychologist, so I studied psychology. And yeah, I, I've been working with this situation of infertility for the last couple of years. Perfect. Amazing. And so you said you were recently a mom. How old is your kid now? My kid is one year old. One year old. Wow. So it's still fresh and new for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. But that's great because from what I understood, It has been quite a journey for you to have this kid, right? Exactly. Could you please tell us more about this journey? For sure. So, um, yeah, when I, was, um, when I was just 12 years old, I got diagnosed with something called Turner syndrome, which basically affected my entire fertility since I had to take off my ovaries. So basically, I don't have ovaries. I grew up not knowing during my childhood and most of my adulthood when, if, or anything about about my fertility or if I was going to be a mom or no. Or Obviously, I really wanted because since I was that age, I already knew that I loved kids. Mm -hmm. But yeah, unfortunately, that happened. So I didn't know. And when I was 23 years old, I went to a doctor and finally got the courage to ask what were my options. Right, so you were very afraid to ask the uh -huh. question in case it was negative. Exactly, exactly. And she told me, it was the first time that I heard about egg donation, so ovo donation, and she told me that it was the only way that I could ever be a mom. So basically having an egg from a donor, from another mm -hmm. woman, to be able to be a mom. And so a few years later, I met my husband and we decided to look after a clinic, a fertility clinic, and started the treatments. And for around four years later, I got pregnant and now my kid is one year old. <laughs> uh, so that was basically a resume of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, no, it definitely must have been a journey. And so just because I personally don't know, the audience might not either, what is the treatment exactly? Yeah, so basically it starts by the couple having a lot of exams, first few exams. And then if everything goes right, they look after the, the donor itself. Oh, okay. And so you mentioned that you had the treatment for four years. How does it work? How often do you have to go? Is it just once or do you have to go regularly? Um, mm -hmm. So basically, yeah, it's four, it was four years because the first year was just the exams. And then because the exams, they have to be recent. And then after that, they start looking for the donor and it takes around two months. And then okay. for me, what happened is after they started the treatment, the, the, the uterus needs to be completely perfect in order to be, in order to be to transferred. Be able to carry it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And so when they find, when they're looking for the donor, are they looking for someone who's 
compatible or how does it work mm -hmm. so when they find the donor they they basically inform us and then we start she starts to prepare her ovaries and mm -hmm. i prepare at the same time it's interesting because at the same time i prepare my uterus so okay it's it's very interesting because it's like somewhere in this city there is someone who is preparing uh, to um, yeah to be my yeah so this is very interesting in that sense yeah and so that's anonymous you don't know the donor and no 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 we don't know we no, don't know okay. the donor nothing about her only in the end we knew that some characteristics but nothing that we could actually I mean, mm -hmm. we don't even go. We don't even go to the clinic at the the same day. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so okay. that's that's also yeah, that's also very interesting. So yeah, so basically, then after they found the donor, we had to prepare the uterus, and this is also very hard because sometimes it's not prepared, sometimes it's not ready, and then yeah, it's it's a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. And so you have to wait for the both of you to be ready to proceed with the insemination is it exactly is it exactly it? Uh, everything needs to be in order you know everything needs to be okay and then sometimes it's just basically it's not prepared still okay so you have i'm asking a lot of questions no, 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 sure. you is it one try that you get or no it was three times three times yeah so the first time I got, I didn't get pregnant. So because they tell you when they fertilize the egg, they tell yeah. you the quality of the eggs. They tell mm -hmm. you what they, because they can only be transferred the third day or the fifth day. Okay. So basically when, when everything is ready, they do the fertilization. So they put your, in this case, my husband's sperm and mm -hmm. then the donor's egg and they fertilize them in vitro. And then yep. they generate uh, the embryos. And the embryos are stronger every day, but they okay. also die. So basically, some we have to have enough quantity so that mm -hmm. they don't die, and also enough quality so they can be transferred the last day possible. And in the first time, it was a bit complicated because in terms of quantity, there weren't many. So we had to transfer already on the third day, which is, I mean, Let's not put it that way because obviously uh, there are embryos that generate pregnancies with three days and mm -hmm. uh, with less quality as well. I mean, it's just yes, a matter of depends. probability. It doesn't mean uh, it's not going to happen, but we have mm -hmm. to be more prepared that it might also not be the first tentative. So And so during this time, you're just basically waiting for a call. Oh my God, yes. That can basically come at any time. Yeah, that's horrible because... Yeah, you're basically waiting for it to be ready. And then when it's ready, you have to do all the procedure, all the transfer. Mm -hmm. And then you have to wait 15 days, which might seem not a lot, but... <laughs> no, it is. For you to wait to know if you're pregnant, it's really a lot. So it's 15 days where you are basically waiting. Am I pregnant? Am I not? It's, is this going to affect the pregnancy? Uh, am I doing this correctly? Can I go on an airplane? Can I do sports? Can I, you know, stuff like this yeah. really. Yeah, just even planning your life. Like what you're going to do for the next few months or not. Or... I know, I know. But it, it doesn't only happen in these 15 days. But I guess it's common that people who are going through these situations often make decisions around they don't really thought about this for instance i can give you an example for instance mm -hmm. if, if the doctor tells you that you there's a high probability that you are going to have twins or triplets and yes. then you are just uh, doing i don't know and you are just buying a car and then all of a sudden you are buying an suv of nine spots because you are just afraid to have triplets when you don't even yes. are pregnant of one so basically uh, what i'm saying is all your choices all your life choices depend then or all of a sudden the doctor tells you or you read somewhere that you cannot eat raw fish and then your sushi night is the only day that you are having with your husband is suddenly affected yeah. by this and you know stuff like this yeah so for a few years you are in limbo basically you, you exactly 
And can you imagine if there, like, there's couples who are waiting for 10 years, five years, six yeah. years. And there's no guarantee. That no guarantee. Mm, that must be very hard. Mm -hmm. Then you're stuck with a big car without even having one kid. <laughs> <laughs> Or you basically ruin your relationship sometimes. It's very hard. I mean, I'm laughing, but it's obviously very hard. Yeah, it's the hardest part is this basically you put your life on hold and you have to be very careful not to be. And this is what I tell also my patients is like, I also gone through it, but we need to take into account that this might take a little bit longer than we thought. And so we need to prioritize each day. So today, my priority is to have sushi with my husband because we haven't been together for a while. And that's nice to be sometimes having dinner together, you know. Yeah, I guess finding ways to stay connected and as a couple rather than just being two people waiting. Mm -hmm, exactly. So maybe if you are afraid to eat sushi, okay, arrange another date night. But because we heard that it's not a good thing to eat raw fish, then we suddenly don't even go to a restaurant, you know. It happens a lot with couples. So I tell them, mm -hmm. don't lose this sense of what's my fear, what's my cognitive distortion, so to say, or mm -hmm. what is exactly possible, you know. Maybe I can buy now a car that's not so big. And then when we have the kid later, we can change the car. It's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you were helping your patients. Is it because since you've been through... The process you know exactly what it feels like so you're now helping um, some other couples go through that as well exactly. is that right exactly exactly as a psychologist I develop a program where they basically join and are helped through the the journey and uh, it's it's been very interesting so people who for various reasons are having troubles having kids And then they come to you for support and advice, yeah. right? Yeah, em emotional. emotional. Yeah, because as I told you before, I think obviously all the medical part is taken care of. A lot mm -hmm. of the medicine has evolved. But I think what has been forgotten is this emotional part whereby people are, all the couples and all people who are going through this experience. But it's it's not so taken into account as something important and mm -hmm. it's a pity because it really affects a lot especially for instance stress affects ovulation you know yes. that some even in the animal kingdom you can see that female animals when they are in labor if they fear that some predator is coming they can stop the labor with the I mean. stress hormone which is called cortisol and they can mm -hmm. stop even the labor Can you imagine how it can affect also your ovulation, the stress? And oh, wow. it's very important to be having this into account because most of the situations come from this. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously my program is not another bubble bath or another meditation program because also sometimes it's not very helpful for some people. But it's actually mm -hmm. you looking at your mental health, your emotional health, and also remember that you are a lot more than your fertility. You have your career, you have yeah. your relationships, you have your spirituality, you have your sports, you have your food. There's a lot of things that you are rather than your, rather than your fertility or your will to be a mother. It's mm -hmm. only having a lot of impact in your life right now. But if we can lower a little bit of this impact, then it's more balanced. Not that we are forgetting about this. For instance, why is the deadline 12 months until you are considered for a fertility? Co yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What I, to I tell my patients a lot is, what would you do if this window was wider? If they tell you it's not 12 months, it's 24 mm -hmm. or I don't know. Maybe, you know, it doesn't need to come in these 12 months. Maybe it's yeah. a little bit later. Maybe you need a little help, but it's not. It doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It's just it's not happening right now. So we need to take into proportion this situation and not, not let it be bigger than it is. And I feel it must be also isolating in some cases oh for sure because i think maybe a lot of people don't tell their friends or family by you know being afraid of raising their hopes and then nothing happens and maybe it must be hard and to just like be understood yeah. i think that's also very important i mean I met a woman, she was having a problem and uh, for 10 years she was having a problem for fertility And it was mm. the first time that she talked out loud about this. Wow. And yes, 
for me Some it was very movie. enlightening i was i was shocked because really these people are very hard to find because they are just hidden you know because behind the shame or behind because also in the it, it society tells you that you should do a lot of things you know and there's one that's becoming a mom and if you're not uh, having it or if you are not wanting it or if you are having trouble with it then you're not worth it of becoming or belonging to this society which is so stupid yes. it's the sense of belonging and then the father or the mother or the in-laws are asking when are you going to be a mom when are and this mm -hmm. is very stressful and very very harming to the emotional health and the uh, people don't really understood it of course people don't do it to harm of course people don't do it to be affecting them in this sense yeah and i was just trying to think out of all the movies and series of course there are some that address you know this issue But for the vast majority, it's people getting pregnant and they didn't even try. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, like first try, woo, pregnant. And I think it must be very hard sometimes to identify with the culture and society. There's always the sister, the cousin, the best friend who got pregnant without even blinking. Mm -hmm. There's always that story. There's always that story in, in each infertility story, which is also very interesting because it's another cognitive distortion because all your sisters, cousins and best friends were having babies before. But because you are trying, then you notice them. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're the only one who's not getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. But it's only a cognitive distortion. It's also something that I work with my patients, which is all of a sudden you go in the street and you only see strollers or pregnant women or babies. Mm -hmm. It happened to me as well. I moved to a condominium where basically in the winter everyone was at home. But then in the summer, in the spring, all the moms and all the strollers were in my backyard because obviously we moved to a place where all the families were <laughs> mm -hmm. and you kind of take it personally exactly for me it caused a lot of anxiety you know but then all of a sudden i was thinking of course i walked in the street before and i didn't notice all these people but now this is having a lot of impact in my life i suddenly start to look at them more closely mm -hmm. as if they they were more close to me than before but i mean yeah it always happened to all the people There's always the sister or the cousin or the best friend or someone who's pregnant at the same time and it causes a lot of stress. Yeah. That's why yeah. I always tell, if you don't want to go to that baby shower, don't go. If you don't want to go to see your newborn nephew, it's okay, take your time, it's fine. Doesn't yeah. mean you shouldn't, but take your time and uh, protect yourself first at this moment. So yeah, yeah this sure. is important. And so your son is one now? Yeah. When did you start helping other couples as well? Yeah, so basically when I started my treatment, I started to believe that I um this call, so to say, maybe one year before mm -hmm. I started the treatments. Okay. And then I joined a program called Health Coaching from IIN, which is a school in the United States of America. They have an online program for health coaching. And I decided to join because I wanted to, basically, I already was a psychologist, but I wanted something that would help me also see the holistic part of the person because I didn't believe that with only the psychology part, I could help these people because there's a lot mm -hmm. to it in terms of fertility. There's food, there's spirituality, there's career, there's finance, there's a lot of things that I could help. Yeah, and also I guess it depends on every couple and oh, for sure. how they live their life. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do that program. And after a year, I was graduated. And then that's when I started to build my program. Hmm, that's amazing. And so last question. Mm -hmm. Is there any piece of advice that you would like to share? Any piece of advice? Yeah, I mean, take care of your emotions. Take care of your stress and pick very wisely the people that you talked to about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Choose very wisely uh, because sometimes it's hard to be talking with people who don't really get it. So yes. I think that's it. Amazing. Well, 
Great, thank you so much. I learned a lot and I think it's very important to talk about it and uh -huh. raise awareness around it. And it's something that unfortunately happens to many people and we should all be aware of that. It is, it is. Unfortunately, it's growing. The numbers are growing. And uh, I just recently found out that an uh, investment fund just bought the clinic that I was in. Mm -hmm. And I just suddenly thought, oh my God, to be something that it's profitable. <laughs> it's, it's something that's profitable because if, if an investment fund is going to uh, make an investment mm -hmm. in this, it means that it's a business, so to say, that it's growing. Of course, if you look at now the families that are also shifting, if you look at, it's not only the traditional couple that is going for fertility treatments, of course, mm -hmm. but it's very interesting that the numbers are, are really, really high at the moment. Hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure and enjoy the rest of your day. Take Bye -bye. care. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to share if you think it might be helpful to someone you know. If you enjoyed this episode, then please make sure to write a review if you're listening on Apple Podcast and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for me. See you soon with the next episode. And in the meantime, have a lovely day.